Did the earth really move just then? <laughs> Stamina seeker. No, just not much fit, that's all. It's been a long time since Mark and me. Sorry. What is that? Yeah, it sounds like Nathan's alarm downstairs. No. No, it's exactly like it was at the Manchester Royal Exchange. It's a bomb. I got on the phones again. What's happened? I don't know. It just went sort of crazy in there. Something exploded, I think. You what? Oh my God, my dad's in there. Don't go in there. No, I'll actually get out. Go in. But get the woman down. Get the man out. Get the man out. Get the man out. Get the man out. Get Oh my God, she. Oh. Nicky, Jane. You can't go in. Look, it's not safe. Just stay where you are, okay? Can you advise us on the situation, please? Oh, you went. Yeah, no problem, mate. Both all right. What did he want? He only asked me if I was the flaming head waiter. You okay, Jack? Yeah. yeah. She's only in shock. She'll be okay, won't you? You sure? Well, we can't do anything till the ambulance fellas get here, can we? Oh, well, I mean, there, perhaps it'll give a bit of a shock too, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry, son. It's okay. Well, everything seems fine up there, but I think I was up to see if all right. No, no, she's probably slept through all this. Don't worry, Al. We'll be fine. Mike, will you give Auntie the bell for us? Let her know I'm OK. I just hope you can catch her before she makes her way over here. Try to move. I'm gonna go and get some help. Just stay there. Sorry. Change of plan. Did you 
she left three and I. What's happened? Is it a bomb? I don't know, do you reckon something exploded? Any injured? There's a few, yeah, but Darren, can you do us a favour and check on our Jackie? She looks a bit dodgy. I'll tell him. <laughs> Dad! while Nicky and me dad are in there. The father can up here soon. Leave to them, please. <laughs> Jason! The three don't know, don't know. Come on. Come on, Thomas. Don't you taking any risks. Let's see what the fire brothers have to say. Come on. Me and my was shot for ages last year. Last time this place went up. But I, I could... I could see and sort of sense everything that was going on, but, you know, everything was all sort of, you know, muffled and that through the old luggles. Yeah. But, Jackie, uh, you'll be fine once the medic fellas get here, because... Oh, Dad. Oh, Jack. Jack, what love. Just leave it, will you? Sound, love, sound. That's what you want. That's, that's, that's good enough for <laughs> Bother by the sight of blood. Not usually. Have you got any cuts or bruises on your hands? Nah. Good. Press there. Hard. Is that it? It's best we can do until the paramedics arrive. You're gonna be all right. Hang in there. I'm sorry. Don't worry about it. Let's see what else we've got. Look, get the fit and the cuts and bruises brigade into Bob Rookie. Make way for the paramedics. All right. I'm gone, Susanna.
and that guy's got to stop the bleeding or something. We were in the first mess, and I asked you for that gun to kill Gary. And you tried to put me off by telling me how heavy your body was and wondering how I could how I'd get rid of it myself. Oh, yeah. And now I know what you meant. I couldn't have done that without Nikki. And I had to force her to carry out the woman who was knocking off her own dad. Crap, that is me. Proud of you, Finnegan. Yeah, so was I. You did all right yourself. The one in the buff doing a number with that dead builder, was she? You did all right and all getting that girl away. Yeah, thanks. That one over there doesn't look too clever. No, I'll go and see how she is. What about that Shelley? Well, she took off as soon as we got outside. Gives me the creeps, that one. Why? Good looking girl, never with a guy. <sighs> I think there's one or two other important things before that, you know. Like, we were almost just killed in there. I need a drink. Hang on, Dad. I'm coming. Hang on. Oh, you know, as well as can be expected, after they'd be blown to bits. Yeah, well, you'd know all about that, wouldn't you? At least you got your daughter in your arms and not buried alive like yeah, mine yeah, was last right, year, when you? That's water under the bridge, you know. Oh, is it? And what's to say you didn't cause this one and all? No way, that's bang out of order, that. Yeah. And what you call this, then? Just leave it, will you? No, I won't just leave Come it. Come on with your lens. Will you just shut it for one minute, please? Then yeah, it's just cool, mate. <sighs> This is going to be what there. Gets the people in different ways, Mike. You see, you've got sugar. Any more of those going? How's that guy with the, uh, the thingy in his side? Oh, he'll be all right. It's lucky to have that other chap around. There's not many people that are comfortable with sticking their hands in open wounds. He was lucky to have you around. So am I. Well, we always said that we wanted our first night to be one we remembered. <laughs> do I need to go back to ripping up sheets and making tea, do you think? 
I don't know about the tea. I think ripping sheets is a good idea. <laughs> I think you'll be all right. Mike. What's happening with Chase? I haven't seen him. Well, you'll be all right. I know. I just want to find him. There's no one to start yet. Yeah, well, look, there's firemen everywhere. If he's still in there, they'll get him out. You know, I just don't know what the world is coming to. Everybody knows that lot of gangsters. All you got to do is look at them. Why aren't they locked up? No, it doesn't work that way. You're telling me. Look at all that commotion in Barbrooka the other night. Them black fellas causing bother. I, I don't think they caused anything. They were just... All right, Mick, don't be going all ethnic on me. I never meant that. Yeah, well, you said it. Yeah, well, I never meant that. Listen, what I meant was... You just forgot who you were talking to. That's what you meant. Ah. Now, if I had forgotten, that means I don't judge you by your colour, doesn't it? You were so wound up by them, you just forgot, that's all. No, I wasn't. All I'm saying is that, well, there's certain types of trouble that you can detect, so, therefore, you can avoid it. Why not letting certain people into places? Exactly. Like that lot there. Or like our Leo and Jerome into Bar Brookie. No, I never said that, did I? But, well, now you come to mention it, here you are. Now, what if you went in there for a quiet bevy and you couldn't get near the bar for a bunch of drunken Albanians? What do you want? That's the way it's going, mate. I'm telling you, if we keep swanning around the world, solving everybody else's problems, then offering free homes to all kinds, then it's then it's going to get worse, isn't it? Are you doing this deliberately? Doing what? We're stood in the middle of a bomb site, and you're spouting all this garbage just to wind me up. Mick, I know you're a sensitive sort of fella, mate, but there's no agenda here. Oh, isn't it? Now, Mr. Dixon. Right. Dad? Dad? So this is it then? I wish I thought it would be in the car or a fight or something. I suppose you never do now, do you? I want to marry between the dad. I don't... I don't want it. You to be there. Me, man. I'm Nick. I'm sorry, Dad. Sorry about the abortion. I'm just like an arm making off over the rape. Is it all? It's just how sad. Dad. Yeah, Dad. Come on, Dad. I love you. No, nope, never said it much, but imagine that you. No, we can't. I'm right, aren't I? It was, wasn't it? It was him, that scumbag brother of yours. It was him, wasn't it? Hey, it was, wasn't Lindsay, it? Will you cool it? Calm down, Lindsay. Yeah, before I got over my post-traumatic shock. Lindsay, what's happening here? Ask them. We know as much as you. He's your brother. Did you have anything to do with this? No. Then what happened? I mean, it's mad all that hard work, and for what? This place is cursed and short. The only case we've got is his brother. Yeah, and who invited them all, eh? Who invited them? If we had anything to do with it, you'd think we'd have been in there when it went up. He's got a cool bed, guys. So what did happen, then? Look, the police want us to move further away from the building, just in case. Yeah, right. I don't know, someone should try to find Margie's shadow. I don't know what's happened. Please, please pay attention now. It is not safe. Hardly the best news to come home to. 
Any idea how we can contact her? I suppose Jesse might know. I'll give it a belly. Yeah. Oh, uh, Mick, uh, can you keep an eye on her, Jackie? Yes, sir. Thanks, mate. What's it all about, eh? No matter what I do, it all gets wrecked. Greg's dead. She was on a copy. What brought all this up? Help me, Dad. I don't want it. I'm scared. Come on. Let's try down this way. The woman next door would not an odd. Not having that. Especially when it was your psycho brother in law who did all of this. I'm really sorry about everything that happened. Don't you dare accuse me, Dad, of having an affair, not till you've got proof. I want him in the first plane out of Faro Airport. From the nearly new to the golden old, a Ford Puma and a Triumph Stagger on sale next as Ford gears up for more deals on wheels. Where have you been? Because I've been gone ages. Excuse us. Nan, is she all right? We had to identify the bodies. <laughs> then we had to talk to the coroner. You must have been a state. But why? What's happened, Mum? What's wrong? The coroner won't believe she dad's body. <laughs> you give her head to Rock Jackson's funeral. <laughs> Well, you can't do that, did, didn't you tell him? Me dad and our Jason, they've got to be together. Oh, I'm sorry, love. But it's some sort of legal thing, in case there's a trial. If they ever catch them, animals will set the bombs. <laughs> Mum, Mum, we'll get us a list then. Mum, they can't leave us like this. <laughs> My Greg and Jason were murdered. <laughs> and they won't even let me see them off together. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I just wish to God the end goes. <laughs> what was my Greg doing there? Do you want some tea? I just don't understand. And what was he doing undressed? He was in the showers, love. Oh, look, love. There's no point going over any of it. I think we should drink Katrina. I'll drink it. Move. Hey, listen. 
They're saying here that there's no connection with the gas explosion at last year, but coppers will not comment on gang warfare links. It'll be better granting some insurance, fiddle mark my words. Well, behave yourself, will you? You wouldn't put lives at risk like that. Our Lindsay could have been killed in that explosion, and half the people we know could have copped for it. Poor Craig, eh? He was the hero when our Kylie was trapped in that gas explosion. Then he gets killed himself and his own son. It's terrible, isn't it? Do you know he was the same age as our little Jim? I love our you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Not too good. Listen, you want to take us easy for a few days, you know? You've had a hell of a shock. Not much chance of that. Well, not at the moment, anyway. How, oh, Susanna? Still unconscious. They checked her sister down, yes? Well, the police seem to think she might be out of the country. For how long? I don't know. Look, I know the poor girl's seriously ill and everything, but I can't be expected to mind her kids forever, you know? Can't Jackie Dixon help out? Oh, she's still in the right state, Mum. No, but I can't keep asking Val to take Wills and Kylie, can I? And if I have the four of them, I'm not going to be able to cope. I mean, after all, Harry's Jackie's son. Well, I mean, can't my dad help out? He's still on holiday. Oh, yeah, it's all right for some. He just keeps getting under my feet. I did offer... He's useless with other people's kids. <sighs> Harry again. Why is it always him? Just have a word with Jackie, will you? I mean, we can't be expected to do all the child minding, can we? It's not fair. OK, I'll talk to her when I... <sighs> <sighs> Oh, can't you do anything to help out, Dad? Will these keep out my mum's way? Oh, it looks like it's down to me to start clearing up the damage at the club and speaking to the insurance people and that now. Anything I can do to help, love? Oh, I don't think so. I just need Jackie to sign a few things and sort out Harry and Emma. Mm. You know, I've still got this flaming tapestry project to do. If I don't show John Howard something decent by next week... Oh, why don't you just get on with it? Get it off your back. Well, you know, I'm working on it with Karen. If I come out to where's your mother will go in. Oh. oh, well, you lied to her last week. Do it again. Say you're at school. You won't say anything. Oh, for God's sake, Dad. Just go. There's more important things in life to be worrying about. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so, so sorry, love. I'm sorry, too. Greg was always good to me. Jason died trying to save his dad. <laughs> you should always be proud of that. <laughs> <laughs> Nikki told you about the funeral. <laughs> can't we do anything about it? <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> we brought our Jason's things back for the hospital. Proud of you, love. He went mad. He said it was too sexy. <laughs> that was just how Jason was. He loved you. I've always known that. <laughs> Rachel, tell me I find you here. Still no change. I know. Hey, Manelia. How are you? The building inspectors have given the OK for people to go and get the stuff from the shops. I mean, they won't all be able to reopen because the props at all the flats will have to stay. I know it's a disaster, but we've got things to be getting on with Jackie. I mean, the loss adjuster from the insurance is coming round after, and I've got these for you to sign, and the forensic people have gone, so I've got to start organising the clean-up. Today, I can't handle it. Okay, I'll deal with it myself then. What about Harry and Emma? I mean, I've had to get my mum to mine them, I and she's. Why couldn't you? I mean, Harry is your baby. He's not. He never was. With Susanna like this, we've got to pull together. Or can't you just take him just till we find the sister? Not today. 
Tomorrow then. I can't do everything, Jackie. Don't suppose I've got any choice, have I? Nathan? Oh, I've only just heard. I was terrified. I thought it might have been you. Okay. I'll catch you later. Katie told me how bad she is. I feel terrible not being here. I looked at the club, I just can't believe more people weren't killed. Oh, I tried and I tried to phone you. Why didn't you have your mobile switched on? No, oh, I was at my brother's place. And it's a bit of a black spot. I was desperate to talk to you. I don't want to know about the club anymore. I've had enough. I think we better get outside. Thanks, Jess. I was thinking of a quiet funeral. Nobody back here. Don't you think we should have people back? It is usual. What do you think, love? Well, if you want to do. I'll go for that, then. Just to meet your family. Right. I haven't even been to see Susanna. I feel like I should be with Harry and Emma, but I couldn't manage. <sighs> with Jackie Corker, they'll be fine. Me and Jace used to talk about having our own children. <laughs> it's not going to happen now. Come on, love, I'm you home. <laughs> Mum, you can't do that. I'll take her. You didn't know if it'd stay. You're too upset. I'll get her a taxi. Come on, let's get you home. You can get some sleep. <sighs> oh, and I'll go to the Undertaker's so sort of things out for our Jason. We can do that. I'll see you to it. Come on. We can't let her do that. Let her go if she wants to, love. It'll help keep her mind off things. What things? Let's just get tidied up in here and I'll make us some dinner. No, Nan. Nan. What things? Like my dad being found with a woman next door with nothing on. You've got an overactive mind, my girl. My mother lived through the Blitz and bombs can blow your clothes right off. Anyone who lived through it knows that. Oh, so let's have no more of it, eh? Especially in front of your poor mum. Why give up something that's taken so long to create? It's not to do with feeling guilty. It's... Well, every step of the way since I came up with the idea, there's been problems. Now this. I just can't face rebuilding on all the hassle. We've got Lindsay and Susanna. If she pulls through. She will, and they'll both help you. Well, they can have the club if they want it. Things have changed since I started on it. There's us and... I think I'd be happy with what I've already got instead of chasing some mad dream. I mean, I've got Bob Brookie and Casey and Rachel and new mates like Vic and Darren. I just want to go with the flow, not live for work, have a quiet life. Do you want to go back to the flat? Well, that is, if they let us in, um, they're all propped up. No, I can sit with Susanna. I was wondering when you were going to show up. Thank God you're still in one piece. Counting my blessings, mate, believe me. Susanna's not out of the woods yet, though. Well, the registrar here is a mate. Says that she's stable but critical. That sounds like a contradiction in terms. What a nightmare. You guys could have been killed. Yeah, well, there but for the grace of God, eh? Right, can you start stacking things up outside? The skips will be here in a minute. Thanks. What a surprise. I was just going to phone you. We just thought we'd come and offer our support. This is terrible. This gorgeous pool destroyed. Yeah, well, I don't need your sympathy. All I want is an extension on the money I owe you. I don't think so. Well, have you seen the state of the place? We're not going to be up and running for another few months yet. December the 1st was the very latest date. I can't extend the time any longer. Business is business. No way. I'm not having that. Especially when it was your psycho brother-in-law who did all of this. We've been through all this. It's written all over this job, Rose. Only a madman like him would bomb a place and give next to no warning. For God's sake, how many more times? Alistair and me were in here. So was Callum. Yeah, clever, isn't he? We may have been at each other's throats, but there's no way he'd harm either one of us. He's sly. This wasn't mindless. Two bombs, one in the kitchen, which means the club and the restaurant can't function, and the second under the pool, our biggest attraction... Callum didn't do this. I was with him all day till he left here. No, 
He got someone to do it for him. Oh, he didn't intend on killing anyone, just wanted to put us out of business. Unfortunately, he killed three people. And you two being here is a brilliant alibi if his name ends up in the frame, eh? Rubbish. No, it's not. I know he did it. I can feel it. He's had it in for me ever since Barry Grant locked him in that container. Take him away, Rose, and talk to him. Tell him about women's intuition. Do you really think he'd risk our lives to get back at Lindsay Corkin? I don't know what you think. The day it happened, he was in one of his moods, excited. I put it down to going to the Algarve, holiday fever. But it could have been the thought of this. You could have killed dozens, hundreds. No, she's right. Whoever saw it thought they would do the maximum damage to the business and the minimum damage to the punters. What are you going to do? I want him in the first plane out of Faro Airport. I do. You're evacuating too, Mr. Dixon. Well, I'm out of business unless I can find somewhere temporary around here. We're setting up a makeshift office in the flat. We've got the OK for going back in. Yeah. Wish I still had one of those flats. It'd make things a lot easier. I was talking to the police. They didn't seem to have a clue, did they? Yeah, I feel really sorry for Jackie. She's worked so hard. Yeah, I know. She was telling me she's uh, thinking of pulling out altogether. Yeah? Mind you, I did warn her the day she went into the clubs and bars game. It's dirty and it's dangerous. She should forget all about that empire building and settle down. Even our Mike's doing that. Oh, something smells good. Anything for me? Sorry, you'll have to look after yourself. OK. Did you talk to Jackie? Yeah, she's not up to it at the moment, Mum. Oh, well, when then? Well, maybe tomorrow. Oh, so meanwhile I've got to cope because you're too busy and your dad's nowhere to be seen. It's not fair, this, you know, Harry's here, kid. Get that, will you? Oh, and um, someone called Shelley rang to see how you are, I think, and she said she'd call back. Oh. Hello? Do you know, I don't know what it is about Harry, but he seems yeah. to need twice the look after that Emma does. I mean, okay. I know she wouldn't say boo to a goose. She's so quiet Drop. and good-natured, you know. Was that your dad? Yeah, he won't be back for a few hours. Well, where is he? I wanted to speak to him. Oh, he's at the school working on that stupid tapestry. <laughs> so how come I don't get to know about it? Do you know? He just goes out of here and he didn't even bother to say drop. Well, what are you doing? I'm phoning the school. What for? Because if you're too busy to go and get Carly and Will from our vals, and I certainly am, then your father can do it. Oh, will you just leave him? You know how important this tapestry is to him. Oh, do I? Or is it the fact that he's just working with Carly? <gasps> don't be soft, Mum. Why cause a load of hassle when we've got other things to deal with? I'll go and collect the kids if I get time. <gasps> no! Never mind that flaming tapestry, Lindsay. When I walk back in here, your father promised me you'd be here to help me in the home, and it's not happening, is it? A week on Thursday. It's the earliest I could go. 12 o'clock at South Sefton Crematorium. Does he have to be cremated? Nicky, don't you remember when he helped your dad convert that old chapel place? I don't want some work taking up my bones in a hundred years' time. It's just cremation, it's horrible. <laughs> but I just want to lay to rest. Oh, come on. Come on, come and lie down. <laughs> Come on. Who was it you spoke to? A dozy school secretary. Uh, did you try the art room as well? Right, sorry to bother you. Thanks very much. Sure. He's not there. Well, she kind of tried all the rooms. The school's gigantic. She said he's not there. That's good enough for me. So where did you phone from?
Right, press through. Is that Karen's answer machine? It can't be. Well, it's the last call we had. You want a flame in here? He rang from your house. He's round there carrying on with her and you. But if you got an answer machine, Mum, she'd be there and she'd answer. Not if they're both chucked up in a bed. Oh, for God's <laughs> sake. Tapestries. I must have been flaming stupid. It was all an excuse for him to be having his off with that stuck-up cow. Will you stop it, Mum? This is ridiculous. <sighs> Look, he told you he was at school, didn't he? And he rang from Karen Dalton's house. I'm not stupid. My dad wouldn't have an affair. <laughs> what a mug I am, eh? All these months and months of coming home late and then waking with her in the holidays and all the time he's carrying on with her. I'll kill him. Mum, you're being stupid. Don't you dare say that to me. I've known him longer than you, Lindsay, and this wouldn't be the first time, you know. And once it was with my own sister. Oh, yeah, and then that Cathy one from the bed shop. I'm going. I've got loads to do. And don't you dare accuse me, Dad, of having an affair, not till you've got proof. What more proof do I need? Hiya, love. How's Susanna? <sighs> She's still unconscious. Free at last, eh? You enjoy jail? Look, you. I was acquitted. Oh, so as we're going to do now, beat me up like your brother did. <laughs> you deserve that. Come on, then. Because that's just what turns rapists on, Nick. Power and control. A bit like your Ryan, the way he beat me till I said I read Nicky. That had nothing to do with me. Oh, come off it. What he did to me wasn't that much different from drugging up some bird and giving her one, was it? Oh, it must be horrible being an innocent man wrongly accused. Your boyfriend was telling me about you jacking her in at the club. Hey, I don't want the dogs in the street now and that. I'll keep stuff. I think you made the right decision. You know I was against it all from the start. And as long as you don't say I told you so. I wouldn't say that. Never mind the club. I just thank God that you're still here, safe and unarmed. Thanks, Dad. We learn from our mistakes, you know, love. There's no shame in it. Yeah, well, it was just too ambitious. Too much hassle. Yeah. Nicky! That's the man you should be scared of. Nicky! Nicky! I've been away. I've just heard about your dad and your brother. I'm really sorry. Thanks. Look, I'm just on my way around your house now. Oh, I'll see ya. Nicky, don't let that Torag Musgrove get to you. No, I won't. Look, I did have a thing for you. If there's anything you want, you know, just as a man, just let me know, yeah? And I'm really sorry about everything that happened. Really sorry. Where have you been? I told Arlen to tell you I'd be late. I said, where have you been? At school. Well, I phoned the school and they said you weren't. I was. Where about in school? Um, in the textile department. How come the school secretary couldn't get hold of you? Oh, I'm taking the notice of her. She's thick as two. Are you telling me the truth, Jimmy? Of course. Go and get the kids from our vows. What's all this about? Just do it. Thanks very much. OK. OK, thank you. We'll be in touch. Yeah. Bye. See you. You shouldn't be here. I needed to see you. I need to ask you about what we saw after the bomb. Susanna and me dad. You did all you could. We both did. They had no... They had no clothes on. They were in the showers. 
I don't know what you mean. You're not stupid. You must have thought the same thing that I have. Was he... Was him and Susanna... Was him and me dad carrying on? Don't be thinking like that. Tell me. Well, some things are best left alone. You know, don't you? <laughs> Tell me. Yeah, they were seeing each other. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's better than good. I was thinking that myself. What do you think you're playing us? There's no going back now. It's over. He forged all his exam certificates, you know. If you're absolutely sure, I'd love to stay. Hey, do you fancy another bottle of wine? Coming up, beautiful, stylish and enigmatic. She married a legend and then became a legend in her own right. The Secret Life of Jackie Kennedy Onassis, next. Right, love, uh, just popping into school for a few hours, OK? Yeah, right, OK. See you later. You all right, love? <laughs> yeah. Why wouldn't I be? No reason. See you later, then. Enjoy your trip. This better be good. I was thinking that myself. So, what's going on? I was hoping you'd tell me. How do you think we're getting on? Doesn't bear thinking about, does he? Imagine losing two members of your family just like that. Don't suppose it's really sunk in yet. Mind you, hasn't sunk in with any of us, has he? You're right there, miss. Oh, yeah. Excuse us. What do you think you're playing us? Come on, we'll drive round. Ain't no chance. I'm not letting this guy intimidate you. Just trying to avoid any aggro. I've not been scared to walk these streets before. I'm certainly not going to start now. So just shift it, will you? If you won't go, I'll call the police. The local fascists are back then. I think you'd better do one. Save your breath. Just a waste of energy. We'll let the police deal with them. There'll uh, be no need for that. Have well, you got nothing better to do? Obviously not. Scumbags. What's their game, eh? Well, that's pretty obvious. 
don't think they're very choosy which minority to have a go at. They're not too fond of my accent either. They're the only minority around here. You want to ring the busies? <laughs> Tell them what? They've done nothing. Oh, yes. But I don't know, there must be a name or something for what they're doing. Threatening behaviour or whatever it's called. And they know we're going out now, don't they? I mean, they might come back and put the windows through. Yeah, well, then we'll call the police. Well, I'm not going anywhere today. I'll keep an eye on the place for you. Fellas like that when they're into testing. They want shooting. Hey, listen, fellas, uh, thanks for coming over. You all right? Yeah. Quick drink. Nikki? Give me a fright. Miles away. How are you doing? Great. Couldn't be happier. What are you doing here? I just had to talk to we. Oh, I don't think she'd be doing much talking today. Look, I don't think you're doing yourself any favours hanging round. I have to get out the house. My mum keeps talking about my dad like he was a saint. I'm having to sit there listening, knowing he wasn't. He was cheating on her. I can't say anything. Must be hard for you. Hard. I should be mourning me dad and my brother, but I can't. I can't even cry. It's gonna take some time to sink in. Any news? No. She's still alive, unfortunately. Nobody in? Very perceptive. Hmm. Only trying to be friendly. Just need a hand? No, no, I'm almost done now. I'm bored, rigid. Nothing on the telly. I'm sick of watching telly. It seems like all I've done since I got home. Anything on the news about the club? No, they're just chasing several lines of inquiry. I know there's never been any love lost between us and the Shadwicks, but you wouldn't wish that on your worst enemy. And Nikki's still convinced that I'm the one who raped her. I should have listened to my instincts and disappeared back to Ireland the minute I got out. Would have been doing myself and everyone else a massive favour. Why are you talking like this? I mean, you're innocent. I know that. You know that. But try telling everyone else around here. Yeah, but if you did disappear, they'd think they were right all along. So what? It still doesn't stop me from wanting to just run away, go somewhere where I'm not reminded of it all every time I walk outside the front door. It's not the answer. I mean, look at me and Abby. You know, as soon as I found out she was pregnant, I was off like a shot. Oh, that's completely different. No, it isn't. <laughs> all I did by running away was make things a million times worse. I mean, look at all the hassle I had to go through to see my own daughter. You can't run away from your problems, because they'll catch you up sooner or later. I can't believe you'd even think I was capable of such a thing. I wonder why. I left you and Rose in there, for God's sake. I'm hardly likely to blow up the club with you in it, am I? It sent a bit of a chill down my spine, thinking my own brother might be capable of that. That's very touching. So what? So you're going to take the word of the slag against your own brother? We all know how you feel about Mark Corkill. This grudge has become almost an obsession. I wouldn't put anything past you. Well, what do you expect? She's even managed to turn my own brother against me. So? You're prepared to see the lot of us blowing sky high? No! What I'm saying is you've gone soft. A year ago, you'd have let me wipe that jumped-up bitch off the face of the earth. Well, maybe that's what fatherhood does to you. Makes you appreciate just how precious life Don't is. Don't start that crap! And anyway, why are you so protective of her? Can't you see she's done it again? She's wrapped you around her little finger. She is stitching me up! Were they off? Do for me, actually. Came this morning from that shelly. That done from the opening. Oh, the interior designer. Yeah. Could be quite useful to us in the future. Well, I thought I might as well bring them in as I'm hardly spending any time at home. Thanks for taking the kids. All I've done is pawn them off on Casey. Jackie, do you think we should get in touch with Max? No. He's the last person Susanna was wanting looking after them. Yeah, but we've got to be realistic. She could be here for weeks. 
go worse. Yeah, well, I don't even want to think about that. She's got to get well. Yeah, I was just wondering what time you were uh, close tonight. Cheers. Uh, excuse me. Hey! See you, Paddy! Hey. to get hold of Liz's work number. Turns out she's been in Milan all week. Did you get through to her? Yeah, she's going to try and get a flight back tonight. Is she going to take the kids? Yeah, well, I said that I have them tonight, but with any luck, she'll be back tomorrow. Oh, I suppose that's something. Why did this have to happen, eh? I mean, what have we ever done to anyone? I suppose we should just be grateful that we're still here. Grateful? I want Susanna's back on her feet. We can pick up where we left off and start thinking about where we're going to go next. I don't even know you even think about that. I don't mean now, I mean once we're all over the shock. You might be able to get over it, but I don't think I ever will. How do you mean? I started all this because I wanted to run a club. I'd spend half my life protecting it from gangsters. As far as I'm concerned, there's no going back now. It's over. Thanks, Karen. I really appreciate it. I mean, I don't want to break all the promises I made to Howard. If it wasn't for him, I probably wouldn't even be in a job. Will you stop worrying? <laughs> oh, very cosy. Jack? So this is what you get up to when you tell me you're off sorting out your stupid tapestries. No wonder you're so enthusiastic about it. Jackie, you got hold of the wrong end of the stick there. Don't waste your breath. I've been stood outside of here for the last half an hour. Jackie, I can assure you. Don't you even speak to me, you stuck up bitch, sitting there like butter wouldn't melt. Make habits of stealing other people's husbands, do you? Hey, Jackie, calm down, will you? It's not like that, you've got it all wrong. The only thing I ever got wrong was trusting you in the first place. We were talking about the tapestry, that's all. You told me you were going into school. Yes, and we are, we're just in our way. We arranged to meet here first. Give me that. I'm telling you the truth. Truth? You don't even know the meaning of the word, Jimmy. Uh, How long's this been going on for, eh? Nothing's going on. This is the first time I've seen Karen since we broke up. <laughs> You're lying again. I'm not. Well, how'd you explain being in her flat then yesterday? And don't even bother to deny it because I pressed 1471 after you rang. Look, Jackie, please. Jackie! <laughs> oh, isn't that nice, eh? Protecting your fancy woman. Well, don't even flatter yourself, Jimmy. Do you really think I'd get into a fight over you? Do you want to know something, love? I think you've done me the biggest favour of my life. You know, you're welcome to him. I just don't he treats you better than he's treated me. And do you want to know something else? He's been lying to you just as long, you know, love, because he's not even a proper teacher. Oh, it's true. He forged all his exam certificates, you know. The only degree he's got is one in pathological lying. Stop farting around and be straight with me for once in your life. Do you want to know someone? I'm starting to wish you didn't have such a narrow escape. Because I would still be sitting next to the pool right now, sipping tequila sunrise and listening to Bell and Sebastian and the Walkman. He's either standing here listening to you talking through your backs. Tell me the truth while you're still got the breath in your body, threatening to kill me. That's very nice. Look! I may have done some stupid things in my time, but bombs! What do you take me for? And if you take the word of Lindsay Tarantino over your own brother, you're an even bigger idiot than I thought you were. 
The last thing I want to believe is that you were prepared to see me and Rose get blasted in that club. What has happened to you in the last couple of years? I don't even feel like I know you anymore. The feeling is mutual. Yeah? Well, you're the one that's changed, not me. No, it scares me more than anything. What would have happened to Chloe if me and Rose had been blown up? And you believe I'd be prepared to watch my wee niece grow up without her mummy and daddy? You've accused me of some things in your time, Al, but, but that... Yeah, I'm sorry. I suppose I just had to hear you tell me yourself. You've drifted so far apart recently, I don't know what you're capable of anymore. Well, no matter what you think of me, there is no way in a million years I could ever, ever pull off a stunt like that, OK? I just hope for your sake you've been straight with me. Because if I ever find out it was you, you won't. You know what you were saying about wanting to throw the towel in? Yeah, I meant to. And I won't be changing my mind. Oh, I just wouldn't want you regretting it six months down the line. I really couldn't stand the thoughts of starting everything from scratch. Well, why don't we just wait to see how bad the damage is before we make any decisions? Because I've already made my decision. I'm not interested. It's finished. Please, Jackie. You're OK. You've got the bar and the cell and I've got nothing else. I'm stopping you from carrying on. I can't do it on my own. You're the one who held everything together. I wouldn't have a clue where to start without you. I swear you'd admit it. So you'll think about it then? The way I'm feeling right now, I'll be quite happy to walk away from everything. You don't mean that. Don't I? I've spent the last couple of years slogging my guts out, setting up one business after the other, and never having a minute to myself. And for what? I'd be quite content just to settle down with Nathan and have a few kids. <laughs> but you never thought you'd hear me say that. You're too much like me. You'd never be happy just being a mum and a wife. You'd always need something else. Yeah, well, maybe all this has changed me. I don't think you should make any rash decisions. Just get off, Lindsay. I've got more important things on my mind than worrying about this stupid club. OK. I'll see you tomorrow. See ya. Oh, I'm sorry. I've been at the hospital since first thing with Susanna. Oh, how is she? Still pretty bad. Oh, by the way, thanks for those flowers. They're gorgeous. You didn't have to do that. No, I wanted to. I must be absolutely devastated. I don't know how I feel. <laughs> Just numb, I suppose. This week's been so manic, I haven't had a chance to take it all in. Sounds to me like you could do with some nice food, a few drinks, and a shoulder to cry on. <laughs> you know, it's the best offer I've had all week. Seen this. It's awful, isn't it? You just don't know what to say, do you? Lex hasn't been through enough. Think we should go and see if she's okay? No, I think she just wants to be left on her own. All right. Look, um, you serve him. I'll never wait, okay? Yeah. Vicky, you okay? <laughs> Katie found what she want. She said she's been stuck in all day with Susanna's kids. Wanted to give her a ring. You just get back with your fancy woman, Jimmy. She isn't my fancy you woman! Pack your bags and get out! I never want to see you again! I'm not going anywhere! I don't want a sword! You get didn't out. see anything! Never a dull moment around here, is there? I mean, she wanted to run off to Ireland. All I want is a change of scenery. I think I deserve it after everything I've been through. Well, you may need a nap then. 
150 quid there. Enough for a uh, ferry ticket and some spending money, you know. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, I've been saving it. I was going to give it to Abby for Leah, but uh, I think you need it more. No, I can't take that. Yeah, you can. Look, it's like you said, you do need a change of scenery. Go off and see Rose and Don. What's gotten into you? You were the one who was determined I stay put. <laughs> I'm not giving it to you. I'm lending it. I need it back. Go off and have holiday and chill out, but promise me that you'll come back and face up to all of this when you've got your head sorted. It's the best offer you're gonna get. Oh, nice one. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe what you have done. Well, you have well and truly finished me off. Good style, do you know that? Yeah, well, it's what you deserved. What I deserved? I have never worked so hard in all my life, and you go and tell Karen I'm a fraud. God only knows what she must be thinking. Is that all you care about, what she might think? I am not carrying on with her! I only lie to you because you kick off every time my name's mentioned. You gave me no choice. It's all my fault now, is this? Karen is my head of department, for God's sake. Of course I'm going to speak to her if I'm running into trouble. That's what she's there for! What about today? Me seeing her in a pub? What was all that about? That's the pub all the teachers go to in term time. I have me dinner there every Friday. With her? Yes, with her, sometimes. We arranged to meet so we could have a gab before we went into school. I lied to you because I know how insecure you get. I didn't want you getting all paranoid over nothing. And this is the thanks I get. Well, even if I have got it wrong about you and Karen, I, I still don't regret telling her, you know. And if I am paranoid, Jimmy, is this any wonder when our whole life is based on lies? The look on her face when you told her. Everything I've ever worked for! To cast off my old image! To be treated with a bit of self-respect for once in my life! And look at me now! Back to square one, so no more scally! That's all you've ever been, isn't it? Even when you were pretending to be a teacher, you were still a scally and a Zeus. Well, God only knows what's going to happen now. Cos I'll tell you something. Karen won't turn a blind eye. I could end up in Nick! Well, you should have thought about that in the first place, then, shouldn't you? If this teaching lock is so important to you, Jimmy, go to university. You do it the hard way, like everybody else. There you are. I'm starting to get worried about you. I hate leaving her there on her own. Oh, how is she? She's still on the critical list. I've got to look after Harry and Emma tonight and all. Katie must be cursing me. I've left them with her all day. I'm sure she won't mind. I was going to take them over to Susanna's and stay there the night. They must be confused enough that I was having to spend the night in some strange flat. Do you want me to come with you? Would you? Oh, come here. Any news from the mum or the sister? Yeah. I managed to get hold of Lisa today. She's been away at some conference in Italy. But she'll be back tomorrow. You know, when this is all over, I think we should go away on holiday together. Just the two of us have a nice long break. I quite happily emigrate right now. And I told Lindsay today that I'm through with the club. Well, if that's what you want, that's your decision. Well, the most important thing is being happy. <laughs> Thank God I've got you. Four to next week. Yeah, well, with a bit of luck, that might come to nothing. Can't seem to be getting away without a fine. Mr Moore said that was as good as guaranteed. Well, I can help you that with that. I mean, after all, it's my fault you're in this mess in the first place, isn't it? Okay, if I call a cab. Oh, it's only early yet. I know, but well, I bet you can't wait to get to bed. Oh, I think I've gone past the point of tiredness. It's just been nice to have a gap to someone who's not directly involved in it mm. all. In fact, why don't you stay over? You can walk around in the morning and get your car. It'll save you loads of hassle. Oh no, I, I wouldn't want to be in the way. Well, don't be daft. Didn't fancy being on my own tonight anyway. And my daughter's staying over at a friend's. I'd be glad of the company. <sighs> If you're absolutely sure, I'd love to stay. Hey, do you fancy another bottle of wine? Do you? You might as well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 
Lying in hospital on the critical list. Need that's dead. I need answers. No trainers. And since when have you been saying who goes where? What the hell happened here? It looks like a bomb hit it. I can do the job! You know I can! I cursed the day my Greg ever set eyes on you. Stay with us on four. Friday comedy kicks off next with more secrets and lies between friends. <laughs> Josh, man. I mean, you just chuck it, Simba. Don't be wearing it again. Let's just get it washed, eh? You should do something about the way things are turning out with you and my mum. Like what? She accuses me and Karen of having an affair and then tries to throw me out. Oh, Dad. I wouldn't be surprised if I got home tonight and my bags were packed. Well, it won't come to that, will it? Yeah, well, I'll keep a room free if I was you. I might be your next lodger. How do you mean? Well, you had someone kipping over last week, didn't you? Oh, yeah, Shelley. She'd had too much to drink, so she stayed over. Oh, I'm glad to hear someone's having a good time. Oh, I can't believe it's ended up like this. I know. And it all feels like my fault. How would you make that one out? Well, I could have told my mum that I'd encouraged you to go over to Carol's. And I could have warned you that she'd found out. Yeah, well, what's done's done, isn't it? What a mess. Yeah. So, what did Karen say when you handed your notice in? Ah. Well, I haven't had the chance to yet. But you've had all morning. Yeah, it's not easy. Dad, resign. Then at least you get three months' pay. But if Karen talks to Mr Howard first, you'll be straight out on your backside. Mick, we're dealing with racist to you, and they only understand one thing, and that's that. Yeah, look at you, Dad. Your broken ribs and your eye. Using sticks on you. Which is what done Simbad in. Lucky it wasn't you. Stupid, I didn't realise it could have been me. All right, come in. Cheers, Lee. All right, Mick. Listen, I can't stop, mate. It's off me and Rachel. Oh, thanks. How's she taking the news? Oh, she's got it. We all are. Yeah, well, don't worry, because we'll be getting them back. Hey, just cool it, will you? Anyway, listen, uh, I've got to go. Me and Rachel going down the hospital to see him, so see you later, lads. Yeah, later. Cheers, Mike. Don't you start mouthing off about revenge. Dad, Simbad's lying in the hospital on the critical list. Well, taking the law into your own hands isn't going to help. So what's next, then? The busies? Oh, they're looking into it, aren't they? Oh, yeah, and we all know how hard they're going to try and pin something for this, don't we? Yeah. Fortunately, Simbad's white, though, so maybe they'll try just that little bit harder, eh? Let's just wait and see. Dad, do you seriously think the busy is going to arrest one person for this? No. There'll be a score of Josh's mates all swearing who's with them on the other side of town. Exactly. So no arrests and no charges. I know. So why are you having to go with us? Because we want to do something. Because these things get out of hand very quickly. Mick, we're pushed in corners, told what to do, where to go, who we can mix with. If I lose my life fighting these, it'll be worth it, because I'm not letting people walk all over me, ever. Oh, hiya. Um, me mum, well, the family. Oh, we're really sorry for what's happened. Thanks. Uh, my mum, uh, she wanted to send flowers for Jason's funeral, but my dad reckoned that a charity donation would be better. Yeah. It's to go to Alder Hay. Right, well, we'll see to that then. Bye. Does this mean Nicky will be treated with respect in future? If you accept that our Luke's innocent, yeah. She knows who she saw that night. 
You know, one day the truth of all this is going to come out and they'll find the real rapist. Don't worry. I pray for that every night. I was wondering when I'd finally catch up with you. Before you say anything, Karen, I'm falling on my sword. And doing what? Beside him. How very noble of you. No, oh, I'd have thought if I didn't go. I'd only be shoved pretty unceremoniously out the door. Well, I expected you to be outside Mr. Howard's door first thing this morning. Oh, it's not an easy thing to do. Give up your job. You understand that I'm duty-bound to report this if you don't do something yourself? Of course I understand. You're the boss, aren't you? I'm just sorry that my missus had to drag your name through the mud. You know, making out that we were on together. I'm glad you've made the right decision without me having to step in. I've thought about this quite a few times, you know, during that Susan Clark business. Your shining hour, every child in the school rooting for you. Yeah, but I had to prove it to the staff and all, didn't I? Especially Abbott. You know, I won't miss that flaming pillock or the fight. Look, I've got things to do. Always knew it would turn sour. Just a question of when. Please don't ask for sympathy, Jimmy. I accepted you as a friend as well as a colleague, but you're a fraud. Excuse me. I, I just wanted to see you. Look, this isn't the time. Me dad's dead. I need answers. Yeah, and Susanna needs rest. Now you either go now or I'll call one of the nurses. Where's Emma and Harry? Lisa's been looking after them. Oh. Been really worried about you. Yeah, and everyone's been asking how you are. How's Greg? Is he all right? <coughs> what? He didn't make it out of the building. <sighs> what happened? He dies in the explosion. So did Jason. <gasps> oh, Greg. Me and Nikki Shadwick had to drag you out. And she knows about you and her dad. Yeah, really? Right. OK, well, thanks for ringing, Tim. Cheers, mate. Bye-bye. Good news. Simmons off the critical list. Oh, brilliant. Well, he's conscious, like, but uh, there's a big problem. What is he? He seems to have lost his hearing. Why? What's wrong? Whack over the head would have helped. How long is he going to be like that for? I don't know, son. Hopefully it'll just be a short-term thing. Simba, death. Someone's going to have to go and sort that Josh out. Listen, Leo. Don't be pushed by Jerome on this one. I'm not. I just want to go and do what's right. But retaliation doesn't make any sense. So what are you going to do? Just sit around and do nothing? What's this? Hey, uh, Simba, off the danger list. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> yeah, I feel like celebrating now. <laughs> Soon go and give that Josh a good kick. Uh, look, this is between me and Simba and Josh and his gang, OK? <laughs> no, he starts on me first. Yeah, and you and Simba, that's the end of your little battle. You overstepped the mark with me and Simba. That makes it our problem, right? <laughs> but they're laughing at you and they're laughing at us. So what shall I do? Hit him. Only they hit harder. You know, like I push you. <laughs> and then I push you again. You might want to push me harder. But I'm bigger than you. So now you need someone bigger to take me out. And then I need someone bigger. Easy, me. What are you doing, Dad? It doesn't work. So what are you going to do? Don't you worry about that. This is my fight. And I want the pair of you to just back off and let me deal with it in my own way. Right? You're OK. Jerome, you leave it to me. Whatever.
What are you doing? New tapestry poster. I thought you were resigning. I am. So? Well, how he's asked me to continue while I work my notice. What? Well, nobody else will be interested in doing it, Karen. So while I work my notice... What notice? You've no right to be in this school as from now. What cock and bull story have you told Mr Howard? No, I just said teaching wasn't for me. You told him that? Well, what did you expect me to say? The truth. I do these things to survive, Karen. My sort of person always does. Really? And what sort of person am I, Jimmy? <sighs> Not like me. Or you'd understand. Understand what? How to lie? When to do it? Yeah, if you like. You don't know me at all. You think because I speak differently, I'm middle class, a member of the club. Well, I'm not. I'm the same as you. Oh, yeah? Yeah. My dad worked as a railway steward, and my mum worked in a supermarket. But they wanted me to do well. They pushed me towards teaching. But when I started and you said teaching needed people like me from the streets... I meant it. Because I thought you were the real McCoy, the working-class hero. Refreshingly honest. That was one of the things I said to Thornton about you. It helped you get the job. Your honesty. My God, what a fool. Taken in by a con man. Look, Karen, I need this three months' notice. It's the money you see. So now you want me to support you in your fraud? Can I have a word to that now, please? What do you think? Well, since when did you become the head nurse? Well, I'm not saying you can't speak to her, just not today. Lindsay. It's OK. Excuse me. Listen, I really need to go. Oh, we can't leave it in there with Susanna. Yeah, I know. OK, you go. I'll cap it back. Are you sure? Yeah. Hey, I found Jessie Shadwick on the way home. She might get to be a bit of a handful. OK, I will. See you later. See you. But Jason as well. Your mum's in bits. You haven't told her? No. <coughs> she really doesn't need to know. But I need to know things. Like, when did it start? I mean, did he go chasing after you or you after him? What? You OK? I don't think any of that detail matters. Well, it matters to me. This was my dad, someone I trusted. He never let you down as a father. But when did it start? And how long has it been going on? We were... we were drawn to each other. I was lonely and... Uh, where he was under stress. Because of what happened to me? <laughs> no, no, his business. But when did it start, then? It, it was a fling. Um, it, it only happened at once. There was nothing in it. I'm sorry, Nicky. Would it have been more than a fling if it wasn't for this explosion? No. You care too much for your mother. Let's just say it was a moment of weakness on both our parts. <clears throat> I know it's hard, Nicky. But you really shouldn't tell your mother. What? You're trying to save your own skin now, aren't you? No. Just your mother's respect for your dad. <laughs> My dad would still be alive if it wasn't for you. <laughs> Take that Josh and that on. Well, he didn't exactly say that, did he? We've oh, got trouble. Oh, that's all we need. Come on. But we're outnumbered, kid. But we're not looking for trouble. Sorry, lads. No trainers. And since when have you been saying he goes away? Since now. New door policy. No dogs, no Irish, no blacks. Do you know where you come in the back in order? 
one, Lee. White power wins again. So what happened to the fight, eh? He did me that in, if you remember. We're the one in here, Lee. Whenever you go into battle, you want your troops to outnumber the opposition at least two to one. So we're not running? As if. Yeah, it's on. Get the boys and get down here fast. Yeah, see you later. Where's Nikki? She's got off. Without any trouble, I hope. She was upset. What do you expect? How's Margie? You've got a nerve. She's lost a child. I know how that feels. Yes. I lost one as well. <laughs> oh, God! I just want to make sure that you keep things to yourself. Margie need never know about you and Greg. I want your word that you won't mention this affair to any of my family. But Nikki knows. Yes. She saved her dad's lover. I, I told her it was a fling. It only happened the once. So lying does have its benefits. <coughs> I suppose so. I curse the day my Greg ever set eyes on you. <laughs> what have I done? Why did I ever get involved with him? Susanna, you were both over 18. It takes two to tango. <laughs> Sorry, love. Yeah, they've been in a few times now. Isn't he working in the club? I don't know, but he's got a big gob on him. Might be going off a word before they get out of hand. It's okay. You don't spray it. <laughs> 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 hey, boys. Can you do some favour and keep the noise down a bit, please? Yeah, uh, sorry. <laughs> Are you working in the club? <laughs> yeah, what's left of it? You're not in there today, like? On me break. <laughs> on the aim, more like. A celebration. Oh, I were for the part ice back here. What? Have you seen Katie around? Um, no. What are you doing in here? Just she said she might pop in. Hey, I'm talking to you. Yeah, and I'm not talking to you, all right. Gonna get one of your paddy mates from the garage, are you? He's no paddy. He's me dad. So you're half paddy then? Hey, now that's enough. I was just gonna uh, tell him the facts of life about who should be coming in this bar. I'm sorry, like, but who comes in here has got nothing to do with you. No, I'll decide that, okay? Hey, look, um, I'm only trying to talk about your door policy, see if there is one. We uh, could keep out the undesirables. Ryan, look, I think it might be best if you go up the flat, see if Katie's there. Yeah, go on, Ryan. Well, while the word undesirable is being mentioned, you're on that list, so on your way. You're chucking me out. Afraid so. Look, if you don't go, I'll get the police, OK? Well, we'll, uh, we'll drink up and uh, then see what happens. Don't I get the chance of an appeal? Appeal? You heard what Howard said. You're lucky he hasn't called the police. But I've got nothing! That's not the school's responsibility! You've committed a criminal offence! Stitched. No! You stitched up everyone in this school! I trusted you. Karen, I only did it because... I'm not interested. I don't want to see you again. Hold on. Hold on. You know, all right, I know I got in here under false pretenses, but I could do the job. We both know that. And I was starting to make a difference to those kids. And what sort of an example is it when you're cheating them? I can do the job! You know I can! Okay, she's a bar for life. We'll see. Oh, I. What's this? Zulu Dawn. Just a little repayment for what happened last week. Phone me. Now I should get the police. No, phone me now. So what are you lot gonna do? Scare us to death by looking at us. Excuse me, gentlemen. Do I detect the distinct lack of scouse chirpiness here? 
Thank God for devolution. Well, come on! Oh, is it not for you? Yeah, if you could send someone round tomorrow, this place needs to measure enough for glass. Yeah. OK, thanks. Bye. What the hell happened here? Looks like a bomb hit it. Uh, oh, steady, man. I won't be starting any fights while your steroids look so effective. It's all right. <laughs> so what? Has half a Liverpool got testosterone overload or something? So? I came to pay my condolences. Death and destruction often have that effect on me. What do you want? My brother Alistair seems to have believed your nonsense about me planting that bomb. That's because you did it. <laughs> Lindsay, I was nowhere near the place. But what I could would have been though if there were a few more key fatalities. My big brother, his crying bitch of a wife and you. It's funny you went around, isn't it? That little quirk of fate would have left me head of the family business. No big brother checking on you. Oh, you'd have been gutted, wouldn't you? Yeah, for about a minute. Plus, a few tears at the funeral would have gone down rather well. You'd have killed your own brother. Come on, Lindsay. I'm not that crass. Scaring people is much more fun. I'll tell you what. Why don't you make me a cup of tea while I make you an interesting business proposition? Well, I thought Alistair did all that. He's too busy with nappies and all that nonsense, you know. Women's work. Uh, speaking of which, where's my tea? No. You'll see it at the door. Uh, steady, mate. <laughs> this will only take a minute, darling. And seriously, I do need to talk business with you. Where's the police in the ambulance? Oh, busy. Oh, look at it all. <laughs> Are you crazy? I told you to leave it alone! Hey, the busies will be here in a minute. Medley. Next time! Next time! Look at the state of him. Basically, when you get right down to it, this place is just, well, bricks and mortar. It's the effort that goes in after you open that makes the real money. What's your point? <laughs> My point. My point is that this place, any place, can be reduced to a pile of rubble. It doesn't matter how much security you have, how much protection. If somebody wants to bomb this place, they will. Are you threatening me? Steady, boys. If another bomb goes off, you might be in here. Maybe even little Kylie. Steady, guys. Bombs mean it's gonna up a leak and that you're out of your depth. I think it'd be best if you just stepped aside. And what? Sell the club to you? No way. Been there before. <laughs> Unfortunately for you, Lindsay, you haven't. Now, you can run to security, you can run to my big brother, you can even run to the police. I'm past caring. I want you out. Go on, on your way. <laughs> oh, I am on my way to the very top, and you are on your way out of here. This is the last warning you will ever receive. Personally, I'd prefer it if you just stepped aside, because if you don't, your mum and dad are going to be arguing over burial or cremation. But, hey, that's parents for you. I'm not going anywhere. Not right away, but that's because I'm such a reasonable man. Your biggest problem, Lindsay, is that this is not negotiable. Disappear, or I'll make you disappear. But as I say, no rush. I'll give you seven days to start packing, but you remember, the clock is ticking. We've got to know each other pretty well over the past couple of years. My guess is that you don't want me breathing down your pretty, pretty, pretty neck. Tick-tock, tick-tock, tick-tock. clock's already ticking. So what are you going to do? What can I do? You let no one down. If I'd have been here, He'd be alive today. They can work miracles these days. Don't be worrying about it. You shouldn't have gone behind me back, should you? Well, I wouldn't have had to if you weren't such a jealous cow. Now, tomorrow night on 4, not one, but two episodes of Ali McBeal. It all starts at 9 o'clock. And next on 4, how to buy a Ferrari for the price of a Ford in Deals on Wheels.
Also, I've got to take those to the police station this morning. I mean, as if the bomber's going to be daft enough to have his photograph taken with a plunger in his hand. And I've had more police on the phone wanting to come here to ask questions about the gang fight the other night. And then, to top it all, Barry Grant rang. What did he want? He's putting the praise off for sale. And I can't say I blame him. He doesn't want anything more to do with it. And do you know what? The sooner I see the back of that club, the better. So you don't want me to come with you? There's no point. I'm just gonna go down there, hold my hands up, pay the fine. If Leo calls while I'm out, tell him... I better get an answer phone. Sorry, mate, did you say something? No. If Leo and Jerome turn up, keep them here till I get back. I'm sorry, I can't hear nothing. If Leo and Jerome come here, keep them here. Are they coming back? I don't know. I thought they were lying low after the fight. I don't know. I haven't heard anything since it all happened. But if they come here, make them stay. Understand? Yeah, right. That's all I need, isn't it? What? Jury service. Says I've got to do jury service. Well, I pity anyone who's up before you. Innocent until proven guilty. They've got no chance. Yeah. What's that? Shopping. That's your job. Oh, stop reading The Guardian now, have you? Cos you're not a teacher anymore. Shopping, snitching, grassing. Oh, Lindsay will knock around later. All right, she'll show you the ropes. Why? What are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing a few extra shifts at work. I don't know how we'd cope otherwise. We'll manage. On oh, what, Jimmy? I was relying on you working three months' notice just to get us through Christmas. Yeah, well, you should have kept your gob shut then, shouldn't you? And you shouldn't have gone behind my back, should you? Skulking round with other women. Well, I would never have to if you weren't such a jealous cow. <laughs> Well, look at your history, Jimmy. You're a liar and you can't be trusted. You're forgetting something this time, aren't you? You were wrong! You're forgetting something as well, aren't you? What about the boy who cried wolf? I've lost my job. My best mate has lost his hearing. And the other week, I nearly lost my daughter. And what do I get off my wife? Understanding? Sympathy? Shut it. Earache! Where are you going? To see Sinbad. I want this shopping done, Jimmy. Got more chance of him listening to me. How is she? Oh, we had a bad night. I'll stay over tonight, keep you company. Did you get much sleep? Oh, well, you don't need much when you get to my age, love. You know, if you ever want to talk to me about anything... Katrina's coming round soon. Nikki, I know you went to see Susanna yesterday. So? I know all about it. <laughs> oh, Nan! <laughs> now, why did he do it? I don't know. <laughs> all night. I'm having to listen to me mum going on about how great he was. <laughs> it was just a fling. It's not important. Not now. But Nan... What is important? <laughs> Is how your mum and dad felt about each other. The way you feel about your dad. But last night, Nan, she was so upset. I just wanted to turn around and tell her. No, don't do that. I wanted to say, Mum, he wasn't the man you thought he was. He was just a pig. He was your dad. He's only for worth wasting me tears on. Cry for our Jason, but sod him. No, you loved him. We all loved him. He made a mistake. We all do. But it's still OK to love him. Right now, Nan. I should be loving him more than ever. That's right. But then I go and find this out. You found out he was a man, that's all. Are they all the same now? Can you trust any of them? No, they're not all the same. And your dad was a good man. He had his faults, yes, but he was a good man. 
And that's what your mum needs to hear at the moment. Don't tell her anything else. Your whale's been turned upside down. The last thing she needs is another kick. I was knocking there for ages, kid. Thought you'd never look up. Are you waiting long, Jim? No. Sit down, I'll try and lip read. Hey, listen, I can't stop long. Gotta get the shopping in with our Lindsay. You've lost me, Jim. Hey? Oh, sorry. How are you? How am I? Yeah. Not too good. How are you? Oh, not so bad, you know. Same as usual, lost my job. Worried sick about our Lindsay. Nagged to death by the missus. I'll tell you something, deafness is wasted on the unmarried. Oh, sorry. Did you hear about the fight? The fight, fight! The fight? Yeah. I believe it was the same fellas that did that to you. Got a taste of their own medicine. Glug, glug, medicine. I've got to go for tests next week, you know. If it's bad news, you're going to have to learn to say sausage dinner in sign language. That's if we've still got a chippy. Mixing court today, you know, over them dodgy pies I sold. Don't be worrying about Mick. Mick, you'll just get a slap on the wrist. Slap on the wrist, Mick. And, hey, when the doctors get hold of your lugs, right, your lugs, they can work miracles these days. Don't be worrying about it. I'll be buying you a radio. Radio for Christmas. I can't hear you, Jim, but I know what you're saying. <laughs> Don't worry, everything will be all right. But the thing is, Jimmy, my daughter lives the other end of the country and the only contact I've got with her is by phone. Katrina's here. Well, you should try and eat something, you know. You know when you were telling me, Dad? How long was it before you washed the sheets? Only I can still smell them in the bed. How long will that last? I don't know. Not exactly an oil painting, am I? It's hardly surprising, is it? You know, Greg was as gorgeous on the day he died as what he was when I first met him. Efton used to wonder what he saw in me. You know why he didn't just go off with somebody else? I mean, look at me. What way comes to mind, Jess? Strength. No. Thrump. Well, you're not likely to be looking at your best at the moment, are you? I let them down, you know, Jess. You let no one down. I should have been here. If I'd have been here, they'd be alive today. Don't torture yourself. If I would have been here, things would have been different. Because Greg would have had to come home to get changed. Because I would have wanted the two of us to go together. And I'd have been sitting here getting ready. He's been going on at me for being late. And he would have been alive today. You don't know that. And so would Jason. Because he wouldn't have had to go into a collapsing building to try and rescue his dad. Our sons died because some evil lunatic planted a bomb, not because of anything we did or didn't do. If I would have acted differently, they'd be alive today. I knew we had some problems, but... He was really trying lately. Really making an effort. I mean, look at this thing you bought me. It's top quality stuff, this. Must have cost a pot. Anyway, it doesn't belong on me. I've been missing Harry and Emma. The kids are helped take your mind off things, that's for sure. But they can't stay with his own sister. Might be a blessing in disguise. Why? I don't know. I'm seeing kids now. I keep thinking about the baby me and Jason could have had. A part of him would still be here now. Margaret had a grandchild. I'd be a mother. You might still be, one day. I can't imagine myself with anyone else. You're only young, Trey. <sighs> You'll get over this one day. It just doesn't seem possible. I know. I mean, 
You half expect to lose your husband one day. Someone's got to go first. We used to joke about it. But Jason. It's my son's funeral on Thursday. And my mother should ever have to face the day of the chance funeral. Think of them both as being together forever. No, the funeral should have been together. Where's she going? I'll go. Are you ready? Yeah, as soon as I find this list. Hey, Dad, how do you fancy going to Bar Brookie for some dinner? We could meet my mum. No, right. Well, they'll have a job asking sin by questions. Be surprised if they even get in the house. Yeah. Hey, oh. talking about jobs, I've been thinking about you being out of work. Yeah, so have I. Well, I need some help at the club. Well, try Kay's AD. She's good at dodging bombs. Dad, I'm serious. I mean, you could work in the cellar or on the door. Love, or... do you even know the meaning of the word serious? There are three people dead. You're going to need more than a bouncer in the cellar, man. So will you give us a hand? Well, admitting that you need help's a start, I suppose. <laughs> I'm offering you a job, that's all. Love, I am not getting mixed up in all that again, I'm telling you. Do you think it'd be right if I stay here tonight? Yeah, if you want. It's just with Susanna's place being empty. And I don't want to go back to my mum and dad's. I'd be glad the company said the truth. What's your mum up to? Is she all right? Yeah, she's strong, me mum. She's always been the one who had it all together. If anyone can get through this, it's me mum. You sure? <laughs> Nan, we can't let her do that. It doesn't matter, love. It's only a fan. It's only a fan. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you get on? A thousand pound fine. Sorry, mate. How'd you get on? What's all this? Busy's came round before. Did Jerome and Leo Johnson live here? Wish I knew. I told them that he did live here, but I didn't say anything else. I just acted dumb, you know. It was hard, I bet. So how'd you get on in court? A thousand... Thousand pound fine. Where am I going to get a thousand pound from? Where are you going to get a thousand pound from? Oh, Mick, I'm sorry, mate. Your know, sorry's no good to me, is it? Sorry? Do you feel better for that? No, not really. I suppose it was a kind of therapy. While it lasted. Oh, what am I going to do now? So I was before it's time to go back to bed. Well, me and Alan Katrina are staying tonight. You better go to the outdoor and get a bottle. Money in me purse. OK. Hi, Jackie. Ooh, you look exhausted. Yeah, well, it's been a long day. I was stuck in that police station for an hour and a half. Then I went to visit Susanna. How is she? On the mend, I think. But I've had the bar to run, and my dad's been in absolute pain all day. Oh, cool. Well, he's heard about Barry selling the parade, and he thinks he's trying to wheedle his way out before he sorted the bomb damage. Yeah, well, I wouldn't put it past him. Yeah, but I was stuck in the middle of an explosion, and all my dad's worried about his great granny's loss of earnings. Do you know what? He thinks post traumatic stress is Christmas at the Royal Mail. She's got something on her mind. Oh, it's probably, especially now you're out of here. She offered me a job at the club this month. Oh, no, Jimmy. No, you are not getting dragged back into that club game. Well, I've got to do something now that you've lost me my job. What happened the last time you were involved in all that? Eh? You nearly died, didn't you? Right. Well, tell her, not me. Lindsay, please, forget all that. Sell the club. It's too dangerous. I've told her. I don't think you realise what it was like for us that night, love. We thought you were dead. Well, I'm not. We thought we'd lost you. Look, I've got to go. You don't belong in that game, Lindsay. And for God's sake, don't drag your father back into it. 
Why don't the pair of you go out and find yourselves quiet, respectable, ordinary jobs, eh? She's just worried about your love. We both are. Look, I'll come round and see you later. I need to talk to you, but not here. Yeah, hey, what's this with us, mate? Take your mind off things. It's Laurel and Hardy, you know, Liberty. It's a cracker. Look, our Leo could be in jail. He could be lying in a ditch somewhere. And you want me to watch Laurel and Hardy? It's that one where they escape from jail and, you know, they put each other's cacks on by mistake. It's a silent one, you know, so help you take your mind off things. Come on, sit down and enjoy it. It'll be a laugh. I don't want to laugh. <laughs> Well, it was just after we got married. We were only kids, really, weren't we? Mm. We was working on this site in McGull. Now, in those days, there was no such thing as toilets on site, was there, Jess? Well, so what did they do? They took a big hill. No. Oh, yeah. They got a plank, stuck it across, and sort of perched over the hill, sitting on the plank. <laughs> hey, that's disgusting. <laughs> hey, and you know what builders are like, you know, after a heavy night on the hill? This hole, you would not go near this hole unless you really had to. Well, anyway, one morning, Greg really had to. And no one told him, you know, because he was the new lad. No one told him that some fella had sawn through nine cents of the blank. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, we shouldn't laugh. He had to walk all the way home. <laughs> I can still see his face. You wouldn't even let him on the bus. I would have let him in the house. I didn't. I used him up and down in the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> he came to see me on Monday. He said if another bomb went off, it might be Kylie next time. He might not have planted it, but he was behind it. He said if I didn't disappear, he'd kill me. Oh, my God. He gave me a week. And the clock's already ticking. So we can... What can I do? It's kill or be killed. Sit down. What are you doing? I'm going to try and teach you that the pen is mightier than the sword. I don't fancy fighting off Callum Finnegan with a bido. Lindsay, listen. A notorious gangster threatens to kill you. What do you do? Disgust. Kill him first. No. First impulses, love, aren't always the best answer. You've got to look at the question from every angle. I already have done. OK. So, what are your options? Kill him before he kills me. OK, write that down, then. Option one, kill him. What else could you do? Nothing. Oh, for God's sake, Lindsay, will you just go with me on this? Please! You might learn something. What else could you do? I could run away. Why, sit down. I could ask Rose for help. Good. What else could you do? Lindsay, come on, think! What would most normal people do if someone threatened to kill them? Go to the police. Exactly. You want me to write that down? Yeah. Right. Can you think of anything else? No. No, me neither. OK, before we go into the pros and cons of each one, a bit of historical background. <sighs> Oh, Dad, this is stupid. Love, write things down. It helps you think. Now, background. OK, there's half a dozen families, right? And they run the whole city, OK? They've got the whole thing boxed off between them. And the Finnegans are one of those half dozen families. They're big people, love. Big, powerful people. But they're not bulletproof. <sighs> Lindsay, if you kill one of them, they will kill one of yours. Fact! And if they don't, they lose their reputation. And once people stop being scared, they've had it. Then stop being scared. But I am scared. I'm scared for you. I'm scared for us. <sighs> Love, better people than us have tried to take on gangsters. And a lot of them have ended up dead. I'm talking about real hard cases here. I'm talking about busies, journalists, you name it. <sighs> Give us that. Run. No way. Don't discount it until we've discussed it, love. 
We're looking for well-argued reasoning here. And I'm looking to save my skin, not write an essay. Why don't you just take Kylie and go? I mean, you know, start afresh somewhere else. Because I owe the Finnegans money. What money? The money we stole off them. Rose found out about it. When? Why didn't you tell me? It doesn't matter. The point is, she gave me till December to pay it back. And if I don't, that all-important family you keep going on about are going to come after me. They've got their reputation to... All right, why don't you just go abroad, the Bahamas, somewhere like that? Well, even if I had the money to do that, they'd come in to get you or me, Mum. We'd be living in fear for the rest of our lives. <sighs> no. The only way to repay that money is to get the club up and running. Well, if you could sell it. It's a bomb site, Dad. I wouldn't even get the money back. All right, all right. So what about Rose? I mean, you asked her to keep Callum away from you before, didn't you? And it didn't work. Yeah, but if she knew what he was up to, I mean, she was in that building when it went up, wasn't she? Hey, he could have killed her and all, couldn't he? I have told her all that. It doesn't matter. They can't control Callum anymore. He said that himself. Now, the police backed. I can prove nothing. It's my word against theirs. Fact. I stole £57,000 off them. Now, how will I explain how I paid for the club if they start investigating my finances? Eh? And say it does go to court. Fact. Witnesses and jurors get intimidated. Now, I learnt all of those facts off you, Dad. And the final fact. If I start to press charges, I'm as good as dead anyway. That's far too sexy, Chief. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. <laughs> Ricky, you keep away from that show. Meanie. Meanie. No more, no more, no more. Dad! Dad, just get off me case, Dad. No more, no more. <laughs> get in there, get in there, get in there. So you always can pick me one to your truck. No, Matthew. You can stop laughing. You can stop laughing. No, Matthew. Stop your laughing, you. Dad! <laughs> Three weeks ago, do you know what was keeping me awake at night? What? <sighs> Tapestry. <laughs> and now I'm talking about having someone killed. So you're gonna help then? I can't let you do it alone. And if there's one thing I've learned, if you want a job done well, go to a professional. Someone would train him. And the proper qualifications. And do you know anyone like that? There was someone I was in Walton Jail with. And he could do it? I think so. For a price. Sorted. The guy has to know today. It's your last chance to say goodbye. I can't. I'll be there for Jason's funeral, Lord. It's a guy called Josh Carter. Nick, where are you, love? Hello, great grannies. Leo Jerome, get down here now! There's a double helping of Ally McBeal starting at 9 o'clock tonight after Davina McCall and Streetmate, which is next. Now there's a surprise. <laughs>